Hi. So you might be wondering, why am I pushing the focus? Well, to be quite honest, I'm pushing the focus because I was an idiot. Remember how a while back I said I spotted a power steering leak? On the right hand side here, I've got a power steering leak. Remember how I said I'm going to make a video about it? So I definitely have some more DIY videos to do on this car. Well, guess what? I spotted the power steering leak and I left it. Then I heard that the power steering pump was starting to make whiny noises when I was turning the wheel and I left it. And guess what? The power steering system failed. I had to tow the car home. So this is a perfect case of spotting a small fault with the car and neglecting it. I'm going to show you how a $30 part turned into a $300 mistake. So the part that failed on my car was the power steering pressure switch. It developed a hole throughout the whole switch and started gushing power steering fluid out the side of it, all over the catalytic converter, the brand new silicon coolant hoses I've put in and just making a general mess of the engine bay. Uh, yeah, it's such a, uh, I'm still kicking myself because I spotted the problem and I'll be honest with you, I ignored it. I left it and I left it because I wanted to get to other things on the car, whereas I should have just fixed it while, as soon as I spotted it basically. So this little sensor is a $30 part. Now, if I would have just swapped that out, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how easy it is to swap this pressure sensor out. But if I would have just done that, I would have avoided having to tow the car home, cleaning up the mess that it's made and all the parts and fluids and everything I needed to buy to, to get the car back to working again. So without any further delay, here is how you change a power steering pressure switch. The tools you're going to need are some power steering fluid suitable for your car, the new pressure switch, a light, a 19 millimeter socket, a ratchet, a pan to catch the fluid, some degreaser to clean up, and some rags or paper towel. Okay, so here is your power steering pump under these red coolant hoses. And when you start your car, if you see oil pouring out of here, it's time to replace your power steering pressure switch. So firstly, just disconnect this electrical connector here and move it out of the way. Now, the pressure switch is located here. Here is the new one, and as you can see, it's a sensor type of plug that has a 19mm socket extension on it. So all you do is feed your socket in and undo the old pressure switch and unwind it. Once you take it out, you will have a bunch of power steering fluid come out, so make sure you have some rags down and a pan underneath your car to catch it all. So here is the old and the new pressure switch side by side and as you can see there is an o-ring here that seals the sensor. But the fluid for me was actually coming through the top here where the electrical connector is. A strange one but that's where these seem to fail. Okay so now just screw the new sensor in. Give the area a clean and reconnect the electrical connector. So what we're going to do now is fill the power steering reservoir back up to full and bleed the air out of the system. Once you're at the full mark on the tank, just start the car. Now your power steering fluid will drop, so just top it up to full again. Turn your steering wheel from side to side a few times and listen for the steering whine to go away. When the steering quietens down, you should be free of air in your system. Also, check your fluid to make sure that you're still at the full mark. If not, you may have another leak somewhere, but mine is good. There are no more leaks at the pressure switch and the fluid is at the full mark. And yep, with that, you are done. See how easy that was? So there you go guys, that's how easy it is to replace a power steering pressure switch. I can't believe I left it to that long. Honestly, don't make the same mistake I did. 
get this thing fixed if uh, you've got a power steering leak. And check there first, you know, a lot of people head straight to the power steering pump, but it may be just your pressure switch like it was for me. But I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on everything now because you know, is the pump next? I don't know. Maybe that's a video for the future. Uh, we'll see if that fails as well, but I'll keep an eye on things now. It was such a stupid mistake. I just left it and left it. Um, and that's what happens, you know, I, I made a mistake. I neglected the car. I thought, no, I'll, I'll, it'll be fine. I'll, it'll keep going. And sure enough, the part failed on me. So I hope you guys learned from my mistake. Don't leave signs like that alone. If it looks like the part is gonna fail, start doing something about it because like in my case, it will fail. So lesson learned the hard way. I hope that this video helps you and you won't have to go through the same thing that I did. And as you can see, it was a pretty easy thing to change. So go ahead and do this if you need to on your car as well. The video will always be here in case you need it. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's uh, subscribed and who's commented so far on my videos. I can't thank everybody enough for the support that they've shown. Um, and I'm, I'm absolutely blown away that um, my videos are, you know, traveling all around the world on this little car. I think it's so amazing that so many people around the world drive this car. It's been a really nice way to connect with everybody. So thank you, thank you for your support. And of course, if you're new and you like what you've seen, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm planning to make a lot more videos and I hope you find them useful. All right, so with that all said, a simple one today. I hope you like what you saw and um, enough chit chat. Go ahead and try this on your car.